once you're done with your stair calculation, you gotta make sure that the figures that you come up with for rise and run actually meet the building code requirements, particularly if you're dealing with a trapped run. The building codes deal with uh, other issues involving stairs, everything from stair stringers, uh, stair threads, handrails, landings, uh, headroom over stairs, everything. I'm gonna go through some of those in this video. The figures that I wrote up, it, I've pre-written this so we can go fast and you don't have to watch me write. These figures are just generic amounts but they do represent a common core or a common wisdom that works for most building codes, for most stairs. You actually have to go to your library and dig up your own local building code. Make sure it's also valid because they do get refreshed and updated every four years. But by and large, humans have the same size, the same foot size, and they can scale the same size of stairs, you know, over the uh, over the centuries and millennia so it doesn't change a lot but uh, building codes do change the numbers okay let's get going the first list on my uh, the first item on my list is stair stringers building code requires that they do have a uniform rise and run hence the need for a stair calculation the Plus or minus quarter inch here means that the uh, due to errors may be made uh, while you're cutting and fabricating the stair, you may be at a quarter inch. That's what that plus or minus means. The stair stringer is this part of the stair. Here I have a scale model of a small set of stairs, and uh, we're talking about this part here. This is the stringer. On this stringer, you can find the threads and in this configuration this stair has an open riser here where you can see through here this stair this set of stair doesn't have a riser it does have it on the stringer here but it doesn't have a piece of wood here uh, to be the riser there okay the code requires that minimum three risers be on a set of stairs if you only have two build a ramp there are different types of stairs according to occupancy in various building codes and uh, a typical figure for a rise is between 5 and 8 inches. If it's less than 5 inches, build a ramp. If you need, due to a trapped run situation, if you need a riser more than 8 inches, build a ladder. Uh, the same applies to runs. It's, uh, it's limited. You can't have shorter than 9 inches because uh, when you're coming down on a set of stairs with, that has uh, two short runs, your heel uh, is kind of hard to have a foothold on it for, with your heel. Okay, and if it's longer than 14 inches, it's, it's too long. Uh, your, your, your step, your gait is going to have to be adjusted from step to step to step. So for anything longer than 14 inches is typically not allowed in building codes. You will see some kind of a calculation in a building code that two rises plus one run have to have a sum or a total of uh, something like between 21 and a half and 27 and a half inches, something in that neighborhood. Or you might see, you might have seen this figure actually that when you add the rise and the run, the um, golden rule or golden, golden ratio or the most comfortable ratio for most people is about 18 inches when you add the amount you calculated for the rise and run. And in the stair calculation video, this one is about 6 inches, I'm rounding it down. This one is about 12 inches, I'm rounding it up. 6 plus 12 is... A <coughs> is 18 so we're fine that way if the stair stringer is made of wood 
the building code specifies that it be a 2 by 10 or wider like a 2 by 12 or even wider it's got to have an effective depth of at least three and a half inches that's the size of a 2 by 4 I'll show you where the effective depth is because this is important when you cut the zigzags out of a stair stringer the effective depth is measured here how do I do this here just without the pen or without the cap removed here this is the effective depth the effective depth is measured from the edge of the stair stringer perpendicular to the edge of the stringer here so this has to be at least three and a half inches so if you start with a 2 by 10 you gotta have a 2 by 4's thickness here at the effective depth this is important if it's too skinny here if it's only if the effective depth is too little it's just gonna snap like a twig so that's effective depth uh, next one the stair stringers uh, may only be placed in some cases 24 inches apart in some other cases uh, you may space them 48 inches apart the spacing of the stringers is not the same as the width of the stair this is the width of the stair and this is the center to center spacing on the stair stringers okay the building code may require that you place one stair stringer every two feet again depending on depending on the type of stair and uh, the occupants and the purpose of it the exterior stair stringers that are outside of the building unit typically codes specify that uh, wooden stringers uh, cannot con cannot be in direct contact with the ground you gotta they, they, they gotta be treated or uh, you have to place them on a concrete blob some something like that there is more to it that's just the stringers next one threads the stair threads must have a thickness of one inch or inch and a half depending again on the type of stair the code specifies that the face grain on the threads run perpendicular to the direction of the stringer sorry but this is what it means the face grain should run perpendicular to the direction of the stringer this is the direction of the stringer okay so this is how the face grain should run they must have usually a slip resistant finish particularly if, if they have uh, laminated uh, flooring or something that is actually slippery the nosing must be curved beveled and uh, and they can uh, project maximum of one inch typically or inch and a half sideways I'll uh, show you what this nosing concept is say here on uh, this thread or this thread you can see that the thread here on this step here is bigger or is projecting in front of this face on the stair stringer so this part here is the nosing here the thread is made longer than this run on the stair stringer this is run and this is the thread width and the difference between the run and the thread width is that little bit of nosing there that you can see there nosing okay uh, the threads must have at least uh, typically a length of 34 inches so that means that the stairway must be 34 inches wide like so and that's different from having a center to center dimension on the stair stringers the building code deals with landings the landings may not be uh, built any which way you like they must be at least minimum 36 by 36 inches so you can stand on it and turn around conveniently and change direction because landings are typically placed where the flights of stairs change direction you might need to place a landing even if it's a straight flight of stairs 
a landing at every 8 feet of height so you can only go that's your maximum rise that's your maximum total rise 8 feet in some cases in some other cases it could be 12 feet you gotta construct a landing again that's your maximum total rise and uh, this one again is depending on the type of stair in the building code there's a bunch of rules that stipulate how landings should meet doorway with doorways and hallways for example if there is a doorway after the landing or at the edge of the landing the door must have a clean swing over the landing the uh, the door may not open directly onto stairs there is more to come the build in the building code you will find numbers and figures on uh, how the handrail should run what the handrail's height should be it's typically between 32 and 38 inches and that height is measured above the nosing line the nosing line is here is a straight line placed on the nosing of the stair threads okay so it's it's not measured from here 32 inches up it's measured from the nosing line 32 inches up the handrail uh, handrail's projection refers to the handrail say so here's your set of stairs the handrail coming in sideways here and making the effective width of the stairway narrower would specify how much they project how much they may project over the stairway you will find detailed um, figures about the grip that relate to the grip how big the handrail could be or should be and what size the grip should be again you'll find a bunch of figures and sentences on how handrails and hallways may intersect how much they can protrude into hallways how handrails should be terminated a bunch of information everything there is to know about the nailing of the handrails you cannot just put the handrail holding bracket into drywall okay that's gonna rip out it's a safety feature that it be supported adequately look it up in the building code how it's done the sometimes the handrails are not mounted on the wall they have spindles and newel posts and you will find in the building code rules on spindle spacing and fastening and everything the headroom I mentioned previously above the stairs and above landings is typically the same in your case it might be different a typical figure would be six foot five inches so when you're coming and going up and down a set of stairs you have enough headroom above it so the floor above here into the, into the edge of the floor above here you don't hit your head and that means that the floor opening above the stair must have the uh, must have a certain length and that leads us to calculating rough openings or floor openings so that's another stair calculation situation and in the building code you will find information about winder stairs and spiral stairs the winder stairs have this kind of uh, uh, this, this would be the shape of the tread in a wide winder stair and, and this would be uh, an image of a step or a tread that's in a spiral stair in the building code you will find details on those ones I just barely scratched the surface here I just want to point your attention to these figures that you have to keep in mind before you cut into your wooden stair stringer or before you fabricate and weld a set of metal stair stringers and uh, stair components